Today we're uh, here with Marshall Kent. He's going to be demonstrating for us the magic of RG and how it relates to a bowling ball. So right now I have him on a physics turntable. This is going to allow him to rotate very easily with very little friction. So this is great because it's like a bowling ball rolling in motion. So what we want to do is demonstrate if I put so much energy into rotating him, so my release, my RPMs, if I give him a nice little turn, he's spinning very freely. So this is like a bowling ball released off your hand. Now right now he's in what you'd consider a higher RG orientation. He's got these weights, they're way out. So he's going relatively slow. Now what happens if we make him a low RG object? I didn't touch him. So now Marshall, go ahead and lower the weights. Notice how much faster he's spinning now. The reason he's spinning faster is because all of the mass is now centered towards what would be the x-axis, or this is the pin. So when the mass is towards the center, it's very easy for him to rotate rapidly. When the mass is out, notice how much slower he spins. So this is the magic of picking the right RG for a bowling ball, is determining do we want a high RG type rotation, or do we want a low RG type rotation. To show differential, we have Mike Fagan on the turntable this time. So we're going to set Mike in motion just like we did with Marshall. And now we can see he has one arm out. So this is the idea of differential. It is literally the difference from one axis of the bowling ball to the other. So we have the high axis, which is his arm out with the weight. And then we have the low axis, which is where he has the weight at his side. So for a bowling ball to get differential, we create an imbalance. So right now he's what I'd call a high orientation. Now let's see what happens when he goes to a medium orientation. It's a little bit slower. Now go ahead and show us the imbalance as one side changes to the other, like a bowling ball would be wobbling, for example. Keep going. So notice we can control how fast he rotates and how much imbalance there is just by the position of the weight, how far it is away from his body. So if we wanted a really lower stable bowling ball, we would have both of the weights at his side. That's the low RG orientation, so it's very neutral, not a lot of imbalance. If we have him raise the one arm out to a high RG, now all of a sudden we get a lot of imbalance. So in this particular case, this is a good example of showing us how we get differential on a bowling ball, is instead of both weights out or both weights in, we create an imbalance in the ball itself. This creates wobble, and as, as we can see by Mike Fagan's turning here, he's definitely out of balance. Good job, Mike. All right, thanks. <laughs> So if Mike Fagan were a bowling ball, right now we'd say that there's too much differential and we probably need to take it down a notch. Just glad I didn't eat lunch first. To explain the difference between a symmetrical ball and an asymmetrical ball, we have Randy Peterson on the turntable this time. So what we're going to do is we have essentially a Symmetrical object. There's really no difference left to right, top to bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to get it spinning, and then we're going to ask Randy to rotate his arms and see what happens. So 15-pound ball, get it spinning fairly fast. Go ahead and move it, Randy. Again? Yeah, nothing really happened. So that's because everything's balanced. So as he's rotating it, there's really no force that's causing Randy to rotate at all. So that's a symmetrical ball. Now, what we want to experiment with is to show the power of asymmetry. So for this, we have an asymmetric object, all right? Just so this time, either way. So this time, we have an asymmetrical object because obviously we can see as it's rotating around one direction, we have a lot of mass out here, but if we rotated it this way, the mass is relatively centered. So this is an asymmetric object. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it spinning just like we did with the bowling ball. Go ahead and rotate your arms a little bit, Randy. More. So the idea here is as the, the wheel is moving, or in this case the asymmetry of the bowling ball, it's actually causing enough force to rotate Randy on this turntable. So that's the key difference between a symmetrical and an asymmetric, is on a symmetrical bowling ball when it starts rotating, there's really no great force that's going to try and cause it to reorientate itself. Whereas the asymmetrical, shown by this bicycle wheel, has enough force to it to actually cause Randy to rotate on the turntable. This is fun. Let's get you really rotating here. 
Ready? Oh, great. 90 degrees. I was hoping you'd say that. 90 degrees? 90 degrees. Whee! 90 the other way? This is fun. I like this. This is great. <laughs> And stabilize yourself. We chose the ERG because we were really looking to match up the weight block shape and the dynamics of that, that comes with that shape with that catalyst core. And when we do testing, we test a multitude of cover stock variations. Again, we're looking at oil displacement. So we're trying to find the right balance for a cover stock. We're definitely looking for higher porosity. We're looking for something that's going to be able to absorb and displace and handle a lot of oil. And this is achieved through the microchasms, through that spacing or through those capsules, you'll actually see the oil be displaced. And then as far as folding goes, if you look, for example, at, at the shifting of the plates, tectonic plates in the, in the earth, and we're looking at, you know, are we looking at a central part of the, the, the Great Plains portion of the U.S., for example, or are we looking at the Rocky Mountains? You know, you're looking at extreme differences here. And when you're looking for a ball for heavy oil and maximum performance, think Rocky Mountains. And that's what you get here when you're looking at this. And again, we have to balance it all to make sure we don't have too steep of cliffs or we don't have too massive of valleys. Again, balancing is the important key part here in the equation. And we take it very seriously at Storm. We don't just throw cover stock X or cover stock Y on a ball and say, let's go with it. We evaluate it for performance. We balance it and compare it with the type of core that we select and put in that bowling ball. And then take a look at the type of bowlers we're trying to fit. And then take a look at the type of lane conditions we're trying to adapt or, or mold this bowling ball to. And that's why you, when you see the crux and you see the ERG cover stock and the catalyst core, you see it all put together on the lane, you're going to be amazed.